So the purpose of today's training was to test our LEAP, which is our law enforcement augmented patrol ability to come out on scene and to assist in the training event. Um, so in a real world situation, if we did have something like this, we would call that LEAP squad up to come help facilitate um, with the security piece and whatever else we needed for. So this is relevant in that fact of getting them through the process and having them out here and getting them see where they're at with their training. Because uh, typically Leap Squad wouldn't be our road squad or on the road typically. So um, this is one of those training events to make sure that they're um, in you know, understanding what's expected of them when they do come on scene. With that Leap Squad, so you have an incident um, that's, so right now I have limited patrols that I have available to do anything. Um, so if I have one incident that takes up a majority of my patrols, then I have to call in that LEAP squad so I can maintain law enforcement to the garrison. So that LEAP squad fills that gap and they'll come out and not necessarily take over the scene, but they'll take over the security of it and any aspects that my traffic or MPI, whatever they need, they can help facilitate that piece. It was good. Good training. Um, this is what's great about it. So, you know, this is going to happen at some extent. Right now, we haven't experienced this on the installation. We've experienced it multiple times off the installation. So my traffic will go out to those and uh, MPI as well. But this is good training for them to see, see it, to kind of get the seriousness of the incident itself and you know, see where they play into this. We've had uh, Patrol Soup out here. So he you know, integrated himself with the incident commander from the fire department at the very beginning. Then. I talked to him, I was like, hey, look, you as the patrol suit need to be flexible. So don't stick yourself to one spot. So he's like tracking. So, you know, he brought another patrol in, swapped, and now he's at another scene. So you got to maintain that flexibility, you know, as a supervisor. So it's, it's good training from the, the supervisor all the way down to private where they're doing the 1594, logging people in and out. So it, it's good training for the whole spectrum. So if you come across a scene like this in a real world situation, if you do not see any type of uh, emergency vehicles out here, give it, make sure you call the PMO or 911 and, or the 911 phone number, uh, that the, the, the new phone number that's out on the cell phone, I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but call that number and make sure that somebody's responding. And then stay on scene. If you can provide medical attention, that would be greatly appreciated. Just make sure that you know what you're doing when you do provide the medical attention. Um, if not, then just monitor the situation for us. Um, and then we'll get out here and then we'll get you information and everything else from you to build the backstory of what happened. No, this is great. And another thing that with this is my whole traffic squad is out here. And the, the normal issue with Korea, you have those rotations. So I'm about to lose one of my Q9ers. And so I'll only have one qualified person to hold that Q9 spot here. So this is great training for the, the incoming traffic personnel to get this training in before they do actually have to have it live. So it's a great experience all around. Anytime you can get out of the office and do some training, it's a great experience. What we're doing on here is we're doing real uh, world training. Uh, this is an exercise for particularly EMS. You know, that's your MPs, fire, medics, things like that. Uh, this is a real life situation in case an accident happens where we have some fatalities involved. Uh, some minor injuries uh, and different things with vehicles and PTDs, things like that. My role today was, uh, I was actually one of the squad leaders uh, for the two fatalities for the soldiers. So my role was supposed to be, I was supposed to go towards the actual site uh, the soldiers were in. I was supposed to interfere, try to contaminate it. You know, I'm a concerned squad leader that says, oh no, these are my soldiers. What's happened to them? Um, and I was supposed to get in there and actually interfere with that kind of stuff. You know, make, again, real life situation where someone's just walking along as a bystander uh, says that, oh, that looks like my soldier's vehicle. Oh, that's my soldier. That type of thing. Real world, obviously, emotions will get to you faster than anything else. You know, you have your soldiers that, you know, are now possibly fatalities. You'll want to be there. Um, take a step back and let the professionals do their job. MP, CID, uh, this is the first time I'm actually going to be seeing it, but we have mortuary assistants out here as helping as well. Um, you know, fantastic people that are doing the right thing. And so take a minute, disconnect yourself from the situation. I know it's, it'll be very difficult if this ever happens to you. And God forbid, we never want this to happen to any soldiers or anything like that. Um, but let the professionals do their job. Take a step back and just <laughs> watch.
I feel like they did really well. Um, they took care of my coworkers really well, Sergeant Tang, you know, injury, they did really well. They gave him a blanket, they made him warm and everything. I was looking real nice. Uh, King Cannon had a leg injury and I saw them brace him up, get him in the ambulance. That was really good to see. I think they did a fantastic job. Um, you know, I mean, if I'll be honest with you, I, the MPs were a little late, let's not lie, you know. <laughs> They're a little late. Uh, but in all honesty, getting to see everyone do all their pieces and everything, marking everything, they did a fantastic job, honestly. <laughs>